what's going on everyone i'm gonna do a really quick and cheap video <laughs> of the updated s2000 no edits here it's just gonna be straight raw so let's uh let's take a look all right so <clears throat> we got a lot done here uh, sorry i didn't you know i didn't even take a bunch of video building this car i did in the beginning but you know as some of you i'm sure some of you can relate you know when you start building you're like dude i'm not trying to I'm not trying to take all these videos i just want to get the job done so anyways get into it so today um getting the charge piping um with the final fit <clears throat> the charge pipe over here so like i said did all this myself so saved a lot of money that weld right there is pretty shitty but that was in the beginning of my days <laughs> but <clears throat> got the um got the wastegate on yesterday so it's not uh it's not fully tightened down yet just because we were testing fitment on the on the wastegate with the dump tube <clears throat> so this is straight line motorsports kit here this is um their manifold which i think is phenomenal it looks absolutely fantastic um but obviously with anything else in life once you start running it we'll, we'll see how strong it really is but i don't anticipate there being any issues um looks like we got a new design here i think in the beginning of their of uh, their kits they didn't really have this this teardrop um this nice transition into the wastegate so um this should resolve any issues they may have had with boost creep but <clears throat> on this motor didn't really see it too much of an issue and i've ran four or five different manifolds so uh this blue tape won't be coming off until the end because of, you know, it's the quality of it. I don't want to mess it up, scratch it, because my luck, I'll drop a damn wrench on it. But um, yeah, so, you know, we got the clutch in, uh, did the competition stage five clutch, <clears throat> um, just make sure that works. Put the wheels on just so I can test it today. Just go through the gears, make sure that uh, nothing's messing up. I wouldn't recommend doing any first, second, third gear, just kind of transitions with no weight on the wheels, it might uh, shock the <coughs> gear set. But, so anyways, moving on. So this turbo, uh, finally got this with the final fit yesterday, um, making sure the clocking was right, making sure the downpipe would exit properly, not hit anything. So this is a Precision 6266 journal bearing. Uh, it is my absolute favorite. Um, you know, it's good for 700, <coughs> 700, 720. Uh, I usually stop about 650, 700 range, and that's, let's see, on my last build, I'll turn around and talk, right, so you're not looking at a turbo. So last build, <clears throat> same motor, stock F22C, made 696, 26 pounds, um, 622 horsepower, 21 pounds, 550 at 15, so you're going to get the point there, but uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so love precision. I had tried Borg Warner before, but this motor, you know, with the twin scroll, just didn't like it unless you had like a really big hot side, like a 1.10. I had a, um, one is below 100, I forget what the specs were, but <clears throat> long ass spool. But, <clears throat> so some of the stuff I did, just little things here, fit and finish, replace these hex bolts um, with the Allen key ones with these two. Tractor Supply Company, if you didn't know it. Dude, Tractor Supply Company, like hardware sections, phenomenal. All the stainless steel, like grade 10 stuff, awesome. So check it out. No, that's, <laughs> I guess that's free, free, uh, free sponsoring or, or um, free marketing. So uh, for right now, <clears throat> um, we have the AC in because I did the relocation kit. So you can see the lines coming up to the dryer here. Uh, I haven't charged it, haven't ran any vacuum. So what I'm going to do, oh, so I'll show you this piece right here, which you might have seen in one of the little intro video things. If you're questioning these zip ties so that my thought process on my last one, which didn't work so well on this, these zip ties, uh, I was kind of tr um, trying to take the bend out of it, the kink. Uh, so what I'm going to end up doing is probably replacing this hose with one that actually has the transition versus one that, you know, because this hose initially, you know, came out. So bending that right there, kept that radius kind of tight. I don't know focus there, but uh, it'll work. It worked on the last one, but, you know, I've grown up a little bit. Don't like cutting corners as much, so I'm definitely going to change that out. Uh, run the stock intake manifold, no reason to change it on this car. I mean, if you're full out drag car, chasing 1,000 horsepower, you know, eight seconds, seven seconds, quarter miles, sure, you know, go with a bigger one. But for in 700 or below, this manifold works flawlessly. Um, so yeah, so the AC stuff, um, I'm not <clears throat> I'm not ready to do, or at least at my patience level, uh, to do the vacuum test and charging it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a smaller belt to bypass this AC pulley. Um, just so I don't have to uh, deal with that headache right now. Um, 
just, again, I just wanna make sure that the car runs, there's no leaks or anything. So moving on over here, just to recap, on any, all the other videos I took, I haven't uploaded yet, but I guess we're just fast forwarding to this. Um, the drive-by wire box is actually relocated um, in here. And so I had to, there's a lot of wires that had to get extended, which are in the fender. And don't worry, like I'll, I'll post up the videos and kind of little tidbits and how I got that to work. Uh, so I did test it, it works. Uh, let's see, where else? We got the full-blown motorsports uh, fuel rail. So we got dash eight feed, dash six return. Went ahead and bought the adapter for this valve cover. Uh, so we can just run a dash 10, um, then use the regular breather port here for dash 10, which goes into this catch can here. So for those of you that don't know, if you turbo a car and you're making a lot of horsepower, you'll definitely want some crank, crank case pressure relief. Uh, if not, you'll be blowing out dipsticks, um, you know, just a lot of a lot of pressure inside of the block, nowhere for it to escape. So things just start getting backed up. You can do the, uh, do your guesses there what's gonna happen next. So <clears throat> we got the wastegate dump tube hanging over there on the kid stuff, <laughs> but uh, not putting that on right this second, at least in this part of the video. So got the oil land, yeah, got the oil land. Um, it's too early today, it's Sunday. I have the oil line. Uh, ran connected. We ran off of the, if I can see, it's hard to see from here, uh, but there's a basically oil pressure sensor fitting, which is a BSPT. I forgot what it's called. One eighth. Yeah. <clears throat> so ran off of that with a little extender, uh, which gave us uh, a port for the oil feed. Oil return. Nothing you've never seen here. Dash 10. Again, make all my own lines. Now, one thing I do here that I highly recommend many of you do from here on out, if you haven't already done it, I know it's a little painful, but it'll save you the headaches, is I run the Dash 10 in the front of the timing chain cover. The reason why is because it has its own little passageway. There, um, there's no obstruction from any kind of you know oil level raising, uh, sloshing around if you're road racing and taking turns, whatever. It sits up pretty high above the oil pan. I do not recommend tapping the girdle and definitely not in the oil pan. You're gonna hear people say, you know, hey, I ran it in the oil pan and, you know, I'm fine. I'm like, dude, your drain line is running at the oil drain plug, right? And even if you run it above, your oil level, right, is always going to slosh around somewhere in that pan. And any little backup, I'm telling you, these journal bearings are so sensitive. Um, precision, specifically, I never had issues with uh, Borg Warner, but um, definitely run the oil line, yeah run the oil line like this, I highly recommend that. If you don't wanna do that, cause you have to take the timing chain cover off, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a pain, then as high as you can in the oil pan, do not use the drain plug. For the love of God, do not use the drain plug. <clears throat> so, um, made a little quick bracket here for the horns. These horns are so pathetic when I went to go test them, but nothing special, just a bracket sits here. Uh, the intercooler. So this is the tightest I've ever ran <clears throat> the intercooler. Normally I, it's a little bit more forward, but you know, trying to keep the stock, like trying to keep this car fairly stock as far as like the whole front end goes with AC lines and brackets, um, running the AC with the, you know, with the dryer right there and being able to fit the front bumper without having to trim anything. That was the, that was the biggest goal here is do not trim anything. The, <clears throat> well, Minus this plastic piece back here, which you don't have a choice uh, so the charge pipe can fit back there. But um, intercooler sits back pretty good. It's as far as I can set it back. Actually, when I remove that cardboard right there, that bracket for the dryer uh, won't be touching anymore. But, um, <clears throat> you know, all the wiring for the fender uh, that was in the engine bay and that I relocated into the fender, like a lot of stuff comes like up through here. And then you'll see the passenger side, same thing, has various wires running through. But again, this intercooler fits with no problems, nothing touching, plenty of space in the front, no trimming in the bumper. I got to keep the stock um, little grill. The one thing I will have to make though, that they don't tell you is, I'm gonna pull it out here, where the hell did it go? The, uh, the shroud, the center shroud that goes it creates like a little tunnel effect for the air to go through the motor so that you know they say yeah you just cut some holes right here well this intercooler is pretty wide and that shroud I'm trying to look at the framers that shroud stops here so i'm gonna have to make one custom so i have a piece of sheet 
ABS there that I'm gonna focus me in. A little sheet ABS, like a four by three, that I'll try to <clears throat> kind of fabricate here to create, you know, that same channeled effect. So the air is direct flow. Now I've ran it without it, it's fine, but I live in Florida, it is extremely hot, so I don't wanna be running the risk of that. Uh, other than that, yeah, today, just gonna finish mocking up the exhaust. I'm just gonna run an open three inch. You know, get this thing uh, building up some oil pressure, testing the fuel system. So running, uh, turn the rack around. Told you, raw, uncut. <laughs> no, ID 2000s, well, take it back because they don't make it anymore. So I'm running the Bosch 2000 or 2200 cc uh, injectors. Uh, twin Walbro 255s, why? Because it works. I don't try to overcomplicate anything and it was good for the power that I'm looking for. So it's gonna be no more than 700. Uh, let's see, we've got the relay ran on that, uh, dedicated uh, 10 gauge power line. What else is done? This is, it's not an extreme build yet. I am gonna be doing the Samsonis transmission with the 8.8 the .8 rear end, just like, well, I didn't have the Samsonis before, but the Ford 8.8 .8 rear end was in the last car and that thing was a tank. But, uh, that's a lot of money for all of that. So the Samsonis transmission is about six grand or 6,500, but it fits with no modification. So I know I don't want to do the T56. I've looked at every option out there and I was like, you know what? Spend a little bit more and get one that fits. It's universal as you can take it and put whatever car you want. And then 8.8 .8 diff. And that, that's the same stuff we're going to run as we did before. Uh, look that today, got to wire up the boost controller, the wide band, get the exhaust finish. Got to cut it up, make some pie cuts, weld it make some hangers for it. And like I said, just goal today is to get this thing to build oil pressure, test for leaks, um, get a nice little idle and call it a day. And so the next video you'll see will be probably some fit and finish of like heat wraps and whatnot, and then actually street tuning it. And if I'm not lazy enough, go to the dyno, we'll see. But I do my own tuning, so no. Appreciate your offering. You know, if you guys are offering any tuning services, no, I'm good. Uh, I only tune my own stuff. I stopped tuning other people's cars, but that's it. So if you want to see this thing run, then stay tuned. You know, like the video, subscribe. Um, I, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna post up videos of the build that I you know started doing with the, but that I started to do um, with the relocation kit, a relocation of things in the Defender. I cannot talk today. It's all good. But yeah. I have probably 10 or 15 videos that I'll consolidate into maybe three or four that show stock form before I even cracked anything open. And then, you know, kind of the process of clutch install was pretty basic. But some of the things I relocated into the fenders from the engine bay. That's all I got. Y'all enjoy your Sunday.